Good day, my name is Olga Kozerevich and this is my video reflection for Specialized Translation 5104 and it contains an application for a translator position. Within this video reflection I will talk about the background, the job selection criteria, my experience, Russian language, I'll answer a few questions about me and I'll leave you with my contact details. The job I will be applying for within this video reflection is the translator position uh, within the United Nations Environmental Program. So the link is right here. The job selection criteria, of course, includes a very high standard of translations. The stream is English to Russian and Russian to English. And as special skills, there is a minimum of three years of experience in translating documents relating to the work on species conservation. And they also note that the consultant should have a good knowledge of the terms and language used by biodiversity related multilateral environmental agreements. Uh, a little bit about me. My background is I am a native Russian speaker. I've moved to live in Australia since 2001. I hold a bachelor degree in communications. I'm currently studying a master in translation and interpreting studies. I have been interpreting in Australia since 2009 and I have been working as an interpreter in Russia in the 90s. I have a keen interest in conservation and I also hold a um, degree in vet science from the St. Petersburg University. I have studied an agreement between a government of Australia and a government of Japan for the protection of migratory birds in danger of extinction and their environment for the communication project. I have an experience with translations covering a range of topics, medical, technical, legal and community. I also translated technical documentation when working for an oil company in Siberia and translated environmental documentation on working in Russian oil fields in Nizhny Vartovsk. Russian is spoken by about 150 million people in the world, placing it squarely in the top 10 of languages spoken worldwide. There are plenty of resources uh, in Russian or English, and it, in regards to standards, dictionaries, parallel texts, peer evaluation and source text glossaries. My translating process involves research, analysis, translation, creating of a glossary, revision, peer support and a second revision. When translating, I pay attention to the audience that the target text is uh, addressed to. Also, keep a close eye on the register and uh, techniques that I use in translation are literal translations, equivalence, then borrowing, which could be transliterated or not, and calc. Um, in recent years, Russian has often adopted words from English rather than create their own. Um, it's done to keep up with the speed of communication in the internet age. Um, and when the English word isn't widely understood, we need to explain its meaning. There are some cultural differences and challenges when translating between Russian and English and one of them is um, all the new Russian, so there are differences within the Russian. Then there are plenty of uh, words that contain double meanings. A uh, mysterious Russian soul that uh, bears quite a negative, um, has a, a negative slant onto saying but doesn't necessarily have a negative meaning to it. Um, Romanizations of proper nouns, so babushka, babushka, Alexandra, Alexander, there, is, uh, there are no firm rules on the romanization of proper nouns. Therefore, uh, we just need to select the preferred uh, way. Transliteration, uh, there is an unfortunate tendency to think of Russian as an emerging language. And uh, I think Russia's long isolation from the Western world has given it an outlier feel. So the urge to use transliterations from English is strong, 
For example, a word like mortgage is uh, sometimes borrowed and transliterated despite the fact that Russian, a mature and extremely developed language, already contains the word ipoteka. At the same time, Russian is very slow to adopt words, much slower than English, and this often results in an English word that doesn't have a direct equivalent. And in these cases, it's always preferable to write out an explanation of the English term rather than choose some equivalency at random or invent something wholly new in Russian. For example, there is no word in Russian for the relatively new to Russia concept of an insurance claim. So when the term comes up, we just must explain it. Uh, there are plenty of aspects of, of um, Russian to keep in mind when translating. Uh, so the word order, there are three genders and a formal and informal mode in Russian. So even a simple thing like the word you in reference to a person could be translated several different ways depending on context and other factors. And uh, when the Russian script is italicized, it looks quite different from the Roman version. I also wanted to give you an example um, of 1956 Khrushchev's speech translated as a threat of a nuclear war. We will bury you, he said. In Russian, this is an idiomatic expression suggesting that I will be at your funeral. So the I will bury you should be translated as I will outlive you or I will, I will outlast you. It is not a particularly friendly remark, but not exactly a threat of a nuclear war either. There are plenty of resources in English and in Russian in regards to reference texts, glossaries, online dictionaries and existing resources on topic. The most popular Russian resource called Multitran Dictionary. It actually contains about 20 different dictionaries and glossaries where we could always double check the definition depending on a field or a topic. Uh, why me? I have a communication background, a high education level in Russia and Australia, have excellent translation skills, I'm well versed in grammar, structure, phonology, semantics or in both languages. Um, I have advanced research skills, efficient in managing large volumes of information, use of translation technologies, produce high standard of work and can work to deadlines and under pressure. These are some of the examples of my work. Reflecting over the 10 texts translated during the last study period, there are a few identified issues. Uh, specialized knowledge in English or Russian requires more research. Linguistic difficulties within specialized texts like grammar, structure and syntax. Eloquence, uh, semantic omissions or additions um, and selection of the right technique, the parallel text research. The feedback given to me by my tutors was to continue exposure to specialized texts, speeches and scenarios, study of established register, legal, government, especially in Russian, confidence in using a variety of translation techniques, refresh a course of Russian syntax, uh, use of technologies and revisions. Following my tutor's advice, I would need to improve on time uh, spent on uh, revisions and maybe double revisions, improve on use of translation technology and improve on Russian grammar and syntax. I also need to continue reading materials on specialized topics continue improving the translation speed, continue building glossaries, and continue to expose myself to specialized texts and scenarios. These are my contact details and thank you for watching my presentation.